we want to solve a trig equation to cotangent x plus cosecant x equals zero over the given interval. The first step is to perform substitutions using the reciprocal identities shown on the right, where cotangent x is equal to cosine x divided by sine x, and cosecant x is equal to one divided by sine x. Notice how the two fractions have a common denominator of sine x, and therefore we can add the two fractions, where the denominator is going to remain sine x, and the numerator is two cosine x plus one. And this fraction is still equal to zero. The fraction is equal to zero when the numerator is equal to zero, and the denominator is non-zero. And therefore the fraction on the left is equal to zero when two cosine x plus one equals zero and sine x doesn't equal zero. Remember the denominator cannot equal zero because division by zero is undefined. We could have also multiplied both sides of the equation by sine x and the result would be the same because of the zero on the right side. And now solving two cosine x plus one equals zero for cosine x, we subtract one on both sides and then divide by two which gives us cosine x equals negative one-half. And now we need to find all the angles that have a cosine function value of negative one-half over the given interval. Let's do this using reference triangles and also verify using the unit circle. So ignoring the negative sign for a moment, having a cosine function value of one-half should remind us of a 60-degree angle or a 30, 60, 90-degree reference triangle where the cosine of 60 degrees, or one-third pi radians, is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which is one-half. But since we're looking for angles that have a cosine function value of negative one-half, and cosine theta is equal to x divided by r on the coordinate plane, we will sketch a 60-degree reference angle and the corresponding reference triangle in the second and third quadrants where x is negative. If x is negative, then the cosine function value is also negative. So here's the 60 degree reference angle in the second quadrant and the corresponding reference triangle where the short leg is negative one, the hypotenuse is two, and the long leg is square root three. And now we'll sketch a 60 degree reference angle in the third quadrant, which would be approximately here. where again the short leg is negative one, the hypotenuse is two, and the long leg is negative square root three. Notice both of these reference angles do have a cosine function value of negative one half. And therefore the first angle over the interval from zero to two pi radians that has a cosine function value of negative one half is this angle here, which is 180 degrees minus 60 degrees or 120 degrees. 120 degrees is equal to two-thirds pi radians. To convert from degrees to radians, we multiply by pi divided by 180 degrees. If we recognize that one-third pi radians is equal to 60 degrees, 120 degrees is equal to two-thirds pi radians. And now the angle in the third quadrant would be this angle here, which measures 180 degrees plus 60 degrees, which is 240 degrees and 240 degrees is equal to four-thirds pi radians. So our solutions are x equals two-thirds pi radians, or x equals four-thirds pi radians. Neither of these angles have a sine function value of zero, and therefore these are the two solutions. Well, let's go ahead and verify this on the unit circle. Remember on the unit circle, x is equal to cosine theta, which means we're looking for an x-coordinate of negative one-half, which again will be in the second and third quadrant. So here we have an x-coordinate of negative one-half, which means the cosine of 120 degrees or two-thirds pi radians is equal to negative one-half. We also have an x-coordinate of negative one-half here in the third quadrant, where the angle is four-thirds pi radians or 240 degrees. So this verifies our two solutions of x equals two-thirds pi radians 
as well as x equals 4 thirds pi radians. I hope you found this helpful.